The top stories, the Ethiopian National Security Council underlines the need to mend deep-seated national fractures through an inclusive approach. And the Ghanaian minister urges African stakeholders to employ additional artificial intelligence by creating new industries through innovations. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to EBC World with me, Shifara Olako, and thank you for watching us. Now, the Ethiopian National Security Council has issued a statement on latest developments in the country. In its statement, the council underscored the need to mend the deep-seated national fractures through an inclusive approach. According to the council, three problem-solving mechanisms are put in place so as to address the existing and new political challenges resulting from recent circumstances, such as the conflict in the northern part of the country, the national dialogue, the transitional justice, and the national rehabilitation processes. The statement said 12,294 people have already been selected from 679 what it does to participate in the national dialogue process, adding that the inclusive national dialogue will commence at regional level soon. As part of the statement, measures are being taken to reinstate citizens displaced due to the conflict in the northern part of the country and the security problems in Oromia and Amhara states. Leadership of the Oromia and Amhara regional states has managed to return many IDPs from campus to their homes. The Council further underscored the inclusive national dialogue, the transitional justice process and the rehabilitation activities are the pillars of the efforts to ensure lasting peace and prosperity. The Council commended the activities the government has been undertaking to ensure inclusive democratic governance in the country. The State Minister for Finance, Samarita Swasu, discussed with Anne Muthoni, USAID's Director of the Regional Support Team for Eastern and Southern Africa on Sustainable Health Financing Strategy. The brief meeting discussed the challenges, good practices, and areas of improvement in the health sector, particularly with the global aim of ending AIDS. The State Minister highlighted that Ethiopia has been making huge investments in the health sector with the objective of increasing the access and improving quality of services. The Regional Director stressed the collaboration on the global security of USAID to end the epidemic. In this regard, both sides emphasized the importance of sustainable financing and collaboration as key factor as per the Ministry of Finance. And moving to business stories, the Zenith Steel Company, widely reputed for producing high-quality steel and electrical equipment in China, has expressed its desire to invest in Bole Lami Industrial Park in Ethiopia. The Ethiopian Industrial Parks Development Corporation CEO Akli Lutadesa received and spoke with the general manager of the company, Leon Donga, and officials. The CEO said the largest number of foreign investors in the industrial parks managed by the corporation is Chinese, adding that the corporation has also opened a Chinese investment desk. Officials of the company explained the investment plan, current activities of the company, and the work they plan to do in the first phase.
Mbale is one of the largest zone areas in Ethiopia and home to the Bali Mountains National Park. Its Afro-Alpine climate is set to host the highest incidence of endemic wildlife per area in the world. These mountains get less of a spotlight compared to the mountains in the northern part of Ethiopia. Welcome back. You're still watching EBC World. Ambassador Peter Pham, the former U.S. Special Envoy for the Sahel and Great Lakes regions of Africa, says it is critical to comprehend Ethiopia's legitimate rights and needs to access the sea and guarantee economic security for its people. The former U.S. Special Envoy, in an exclusive interview with the Ethiopian News Agency, has applauded Ethiopia for being vital to maintaining security and stability in a region. Johannes van Thouwen has more on that. It is imperative to understand Ethiopia's legitimate interests and needs to access sea and ensure economic security for its people. This is according to Peter Pan, a former U.S. Special Envoy for the Sahel and Great Lakes regions of Africa. In an exclusive interview with the Ethiopian news agency, the former U.S. Special Envoy said Ethiopia has played a critical role in providing peace and security throughout the region. Ethiopia has played a critical role in providing peace and security throughout the region and has every right to expect also in return for that some goodwill and understanding for its legitimate interests and needs uh, with in terms of access to the sea and, and, up, and secure economic security uh, for its people. Uh, it can't all be a one-way street. <laughs> Speaking about the MOU signed between Ethiopia and Somaliland, Pam stated that he has been very encouraged by the historic agreement from the very day of the announcement. According to him, the second part of the reality is Ethiopia's legitimate interest in having redundant port structure. I think Pam said that Ethiopia, one of the world's most populous countries with 120 million people, should not rely on one outlet. Ethiopia is already uh, the world's most populous landlocked state, with 120 million people with no direct access to the sea. Now, to date, Djibouti has functioned, and nothing negative about the access through Djibouti. But a great country like this with 120 million people should not rely on one outlet. Uh, the fact that a, uh, Ethiopia is looking for access and the port of Berbera makes sense economically. Uh, DP World has already invested in there. The U United Kingdom government is investing in phase two. There's a road infrastructure bringing uh, the, the port there. There's an excellent runway. All sorts of things make that a compelling case. Moreover, Pam elaborated that Africa as a whole and this region in particular lacks critical infrastructure. I think the, the key is that this re Africa as a whole, but this region in particular, lacks critical infrastructure. So anything that contributes to it, I'm very much in favor of it. Whether it be ports, roads, energy, uh, electricity, anything that adds to the stock that helps create the conditions for economic growth 
and prosperity uh, shared throughout the region uh, is a positive development. The former U.S. Special Envoy further pointed out that as Ethiopia is looking for access to sea, the Barbara port makes sense economically. And finally, a Ghanaian minister has urged African stakeholders to employ more artificial intelligence by way of creating new industries through the mechanisms of innovations. Regarding the new normal threats of AI, the minister who talked to our staff reporter, Tigist Saranissa, says mechanisms need to be put in place to tackle threats since every technology comes with its benefits and threats. Listen to this. With a rapidly growing youth population, increased connectivity, and a bargaining tech ecosystem, the African continent seems to possess most of the element to harness AI and data science for a significantly economic and social impact. Approached by ABC, Nashiru Salifu from Ghanaian Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation reiterated that what science, technology and innovation does is create industries through the mechanisms of innovations. Well, so it comes in both um, forms, um, socioeconomic transformation. So you have social benefits and economic benefits. What STI does is to create new industries through the mechanisms of um, innovation we are able to create new industries. And as you can um, see around the world, startups are springing up everywhere. And the biggest challenge of every government in the world today is jobs creation and economic transformation. So once you have startups springing up, what it means is that you are going to create jobs and it's going to enhance the livelihoods of people um, at the grassroots level. Artificial intelligence, AI, and big data science hold immense potential for creating new sources of economic and social development and for addressing numerous environmental concerns. Salifu took time to reflect on how Ethiopia's STI impressed him, adding the initiative creates a platform to learn from each other. Well, I think um, that has been the basis of this forum, to learn from each other. And I was impressed by what Ethiopia is doing. And we have um, taken notes of what Ethiopia is doing. Obviously, we also shared our experiences, what we are doing in Ghana, and I'm, I believe Ethiopia would have also picked some lessons from that. Um, in the case of Ghana, we are open to collaboration with African countries and other countries that have done so well um, in the world as far as STI is concerned. So what we would be doing after this forum is to have a network of STI actors um, in the various countries so we can be working together to share lessons and experience to drive our STI strategies at our various um, country levels. With regard to new normal traits of AI, Salifu says mechanisms need to put in place to tackle threats since every technology comes with benefits and threats. Well, so every technology comes with its benefits and then um, threats. And AI is just one of it. Um, I think um, somehow it is here with us already. What we rather need to do is to build our capacity, the African talent and skills in the area of AI, to take advantage of um, the revolution the fourth industrial revolution is characterized by AI and other frontier technologies, and we can't be left behind. And I would say so far, even as we um, talk about the threats of AI, um, so much benefits have actually been spoken about than the threats. And what it means is that um, AI is, is generally beneficial. We need to put in mechanisms to address the, the threats. And I think every country should have a strategy to do that. In Ghana, for instance, um, we are developing a strategy um, on cybersecurity and other AI, AI and other emerging technology, the threats that comes with it. We are, we are developing a strategy to mitigate that and combat that and rather focus on the benefits of um, these um, technologies that are here with us today. In order to share benefits of STI, working collaboratively is much needed, he added. AI and data science is expected to create most economic and social benefits in Africa now and in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching ABC World. Now a quick recap of the top stories. Ethiopian National Security Council underlines the need to mend deep-seated national fractures through inclusive approach.
and the Ghanaian minister urges African stakeholders to employ additional artificial intelligence by creating new industries through innovations. And with that, we come to the end of today's news. Thank you for watching us. Bye-bye.